This is just one piece of a multi-part course. If you're interested in more, check out tunefiles.com. After posting this course, it came to my attention that there is a slight discrepancy between the rig I designed in the vector design course and the rig that we're using now to set up the animation. And let me show you what I mean by this. When I originally designed this character, if we come in here to the group and let's just go into the head, you'll see that I put all of the hair pieces on one layer or within one group. So we have the highlights, the shading, and the hair itself, including the strands, these two big strands, all on one layer. However, when it comes time to rig and animate, I used a slightly different version of that character. And without realizing it, I actually went in and isolated these two strands and when I go through the rigging and animation process, I use these isolated groups as part of that process. And so if you went through the design course and you set up your hair all on one layer, but you're looking to separate it out, that's what this video is all about. And it's actually a pretty quick process. And this is also a good opportunity to show that sometimes things don't quite work out the way you want. So you have to go in and make modifications. To begin the process, we are going to go inside of the hair group and locate the hair layer where we put down all of the points for the main shape of the hair. And now we're going to focus in on this first strand. We can grab the select points tool or G on the keyboard and just come in and we're going to lasso around. And if you can't lasso, make sure you have lasso enabled on the top. Otherwise you'll do a rectangle selection but I'm just going to come in here and lasso all the way around these points, just like this, and release. So now we have that strand selected. I'm going to use Command X or Control X if you're on Windows to cut. Next, I'm going to back out here on my layers and go to the head and then make a new vector. Make sure that's inside the head. I can click once and name this hair strand small, or you can name it something that to you signifies what this is. Now we can use command V or control V to paste this new shape back in place. Now this isn't going to be a perfect transition because we are breaking the shape. So we will have to go back and close in the shape here and do a couple of things with the highlights and such as well. But let's just come over here and grab the big strand while we're doing this. So we can click on the hair layer once again, making sure that we can see everything here. We just want to grab that strand with the select points tool. So just come in, try to lasso around and select your points like that. Then command X, make a new vector. I'll just name this one hair strand big, and then we can paste that into place. So now starting with hair strand big, I'm just going to come in here with the add points tool and add in some points here to close this shape off. So we can just come in like this and add a point like that. And this is going to enclose the shape and you can see now that we have white as the fill color, but we just want to come in here with our eyedropper and select the actual hair color to change that back. Now you'll see, I also accidentally adjusted the line width when doing this, not a big deal. We can just come in here and reduce the line width to two or is it three? It's one of those. There we go. That's looking a bit better. And then we also want to remove this boundary here for the hair because that doesn't look right. Coming over here, we can grab the hide edge tool and just come in here and hide the edges just like that. So we are enclosing the shape, but now we have simply hidden that boundary. And we can do the same now for the small strand. Just come in here and close your shape. 
and I have my color and my line width set up this time, so we should have no issues there. Now I can come in and just hide that boundary and we're looking pretty good. Now, of course, we need to transfer the shading and highlighting over. So let's right click on hair strand big and group that into a selection. And we can just rename this one then to hair strand big once again. Next, go back here to your hair group. We can start with the highlights. And let's hide the strands of hair just for a moment so we can see the different highlights and such. And we want the highlights for the big strand of hair. So this one. So basically any highlight starting here and going down is what we want to select. And again, you can just bring this back just to take a look to make sure that everything is looking good. So on highlights, hit G on the keyboard. And we're just going to come in and select those highlighted points just like that. And then we can use command X to cut. Let's come back here to the big hair strand and make a new vector inside of the big hair strand group. We can name it highlights and then we're just going to paste those in. Same for the shading. Go back here to the hair, come down here to your shades and we're just going to once again lasso what we need here. So just coming in, I'm going to lasso this chunk right here. And you might have to zoom in, but you can see I got it. You can see that we have some shapes kind of colliding here, but that should work. And we're just going to use Command X. Come over here to your new group. Name it Shading. And then just paste that in. And we're going to deal with the masking here in a moment because we masked the hair and we're going to have to do the same for the strands. Now, if we go to Shading 2, you can see that we actually have no vectors on that layer where the big strand of hair is. So we should be fine there. So now coming back here to the big strand of hair, we can just reveal that to make sure that we can see it. It's right here. We're just going to now double click on that group, come over here to masking and then choose hide all and then hit apply and then hit OK. So now the masking has been reapplied to this. Also make sure you can see that we have our highlights clashing with the line work. Make sure you come down here and double click on hair strand big, go to your masking and then choose to exclude your strokes and then click okay. So now you have that reestablished looking pretty good. And then the last step is just to go in and do the same for the small hair strand. So I'll just do that really quick, repeating these steps. I'm not going to be as deliberate. I'm just going to do it so that way you can see it. So small hair strand or hair strand small, however you wish to designate it. Come back here to your hair. We'll start with the highlights. In this case, we only really have one highlight that we have to worry about. So we're just going to grab that one, cut it out, come over here to the small hair strand, make a new vector, name this one highlights, paste this in. Come over here to your shading for hair. And once again, this can be kind of hard to distinguish, but we have just this big piece right here on the right side of the strand. So we're just going to come in here and grab that piece just like this. There we are. We can cut that, come over here to your shading and then making sure of course we're on the small strand and we make that shading layer, we can just paste that in. Finally, double click on hair strand small, the group that is, go to your masking, choose to hide all, apply it, come down here to your hair strand small and make sure you exclude the strokes and then hit okay. So now we have the hair pieces separated into their own groups. So again, if you followed my design course and you put the hair on one layer, like this was originally set up to be, so you might want to set it up so you can follow along with the exact steps in the rigging and animation course. But just note, if you did put the hair on one layer, you can still make this work. It's more of a matter of personal preference. And there is more control when you group things together. So it is recommended, but not necessary. 
So hopefully by me recording this video, you're not too confused by those steps. I just wanted to come in here and fix something since I wasn't clear and forgot a step. And one more thing you might need to do once you finish all this, you'll see that some of the hair pieces might be a little bit off. You can come in here and rectify that by coming in here and just adjusting the way the hair looks. And again, you can use your reference and your sketch, and you might even need to come in here and add an extra point or two just to kind of get it back to its original shape. But that should be the only real worry you have here. Just coming in here and we can modify it and get it back to where it needs to be. And there you go. So hopefully that helps you understand the process. We're going to pause here and up next, move back over to rigging and animating. To view the rest of this course or gain access to the source files, visit tunefiles.com.